Hello everyone, my name is Bailey and welcome back to my channel. Today I figured I'd give you guys a NaNoWriMo recap talking about what I learned and what I hope to do for next year or whenever I attempt this again. So I guess the first thing to address would be did I win or did I lose? Uh, if you guys have been following me throughout my little NaNoWriMo journey that I've had up on YouTube and Instagram, you guys will know the last update I gave you was about 1500 words and that's about where I stopped for NaNoWriMo. Um, <clears throat> I did not win, although I do not see NaNoWriMo as a failure. Um, it is my first time. I'm really proud of myself. I did 15,000 words and over that in a month. And for being a first time, you know, novelist, first time NaNoWriMo, -er, um, I think it's pretty well done. I mean, I didn't really ever expect to get the 50,000 words. It was just kind of like a nice goal I had in mind because I just didn't really think I was going to get that my first try. But I wasn't sure where I was going to land when I started the month. Honestly, for it being my first time, 50,000 words isn't that bad, I don't think. Um, you know, obviously this is probably the worst I will have ever done in NaNoWriMo, which means I'm at the bottom. And that's okay, because 15,000 words out of 50,000 words is still pretty high up for being my first time and being at the bottom of this. Yeah, the only way to go from the bottom is up, so this will most likely be the worst NaNoWriMo I've done. But, it has also been the best one I've done so far, considering it's my first time, and I wrote 15,000 words. Like, if you sit there and dissect that, that's a lot of freaking words in a month. I commend people like Kate Cavanaugh, who passed the 50,000 word mark in, like, what, day 19, she said? It's insane. I was just so proud to hear that. And then people like, oh, who was it? Winter's Robin? I think also passed her 50,000 word mark and it's just they're amazing um, and granted people like Kate Kavanaugh this isn't their first time but that's insane it just makes me hope and aspire to be like them in the future and to hope of maybe someday that I can do that too I'm not gonna lie I had some misconceptions about NaNoWriMo when I first started and it's not due to anybody telling me that the, um, the wrong information or anything. It's just I thought I could handle more than I could during NaNoWriMo. And for me being in school and work and trying to get back into the condo all around the same timeline while doing NaNoWriMo, it really put into perspective how much time I was going to have to dedicate to NaNoWriMo. And it wasn't as much as I wanted to. But to juggle all that and still get 15,000 words in, I'm really proud of myself. Um, I think it's great for my first time. Hopefully the next time I attempt this, I have a lot more time to write. Whether it be next year if I have time, which probably won't happen, I might put it on hold to finish with school and graduate um, so I can graduate on time. And, to, and it may be that it's the next year in, like, what, 2022? 20, um, 21, 22? probably 22 um, so it'll most likely be in 2022 that I attempt this again after I've you know graduated and cleaned my slate so that I can focus on this a little more it's not going to be full-time yet obviously I don't have that kind of um, resources yet but I you know the plan right now is to get a day job and so I can write as often as possible just gotta pay off those loans. You know, I did think it was gonna be a little easier to get my words in, and I didn't really realize how much 50,000 words was. Um, it's a lot. I figured with my prep work I would have been a little more further along, but I guess really I wasn't done with zero drafting, and so basically, all of NaNoWriMo, that 15k, was about a half draft. Um, that's what I'm going to deem my half draft, at least. And then I'll be working on my first draft probably in the spring. Um, a full completed first draft, reworking it, maybe change the point of view. I think I just really thought I could have juggled more, and I didn't. <laughs> what I didn't consider was finals. 
right at the same time as NaNoWriMo, doing the prep for finals and then finals this next week. I didn't take into account all the projects and stuff I was going to have before the end of the semester. NaNoWriMo just fell at a really bad time this year. Um, so I have high hopes for the next time I attempt this, probably again when I graduate will be the most likely next time I attempt this. That's probably when I'm going to attempt it again. Um, so I have a lot more time, there's no finals or anything, it's just work. And you know, what really helped me was, <clears throat> what really helped me to get to my 15,000 words, which I still deem a success, is, you know, setting aside a lot of time and I did have to sacrifice a few days here and there for different reasons just to write whether it be hanging out with people or like changing my homework days or something it takes a lot of sacrificing when you're not just doing NaNoWriMo and NaNoWriMo only but you know I'm I was okay with that the other thing that helped me was I found a new kind of method that I liked when I was working. I got about like halfway, a little over halfway through the month and I was like, huh, I should have been doing this the entire time and so I'll probably implement that the next time and into, I'll probably be continuing sprints, though I won't be in NaNoWriMo. I'll probably still write them down anyway, just to kind of like, I don't know, keep up the spirit of NaNoWriMo. I think it might help me complete the book a little faster and to keep it with a better attitude. The last thing that really helped me was that I found a bunch of z old zero drafts and a lot of prep work that I thought I had lost. Um, it was really, really old versions of this that weren't exactly the same book. It was a little more different, but it had a lot of dialogue that I liked, so, um, and a few descriptors that I liked, so I took those old chapters and reworded them, reworked them into the fit the plotline in the story and that sped up my process way way faster. It helped me really push to that 15k mark because in one weekend I was put booking past like um, 7k that weekend in the last weekend or so. So <clears throat> you know those zero drafts really helped me out and so I think for next year it's gonna be a lot or the next time I attempt this it's going to be a lot more prep work and it's going to be a lot more outlining and zero drafting um, whether it be for empathy again or it's for a new book that I try in that time um, I don't really know we're just gonna see how it goes I think the next time that I attempt to vlog for it I'm gonna do daily vlogs it keeps me more dedicated and on track I think if I have to film every single time that I sit down to write a sprint or at least most of the time it keeps me more like oh you gotta film today if I do a daily vlog it's gonna keep me more dedicated to writing every single day um, doing once a week vlogs yes it worked for having school but like I had one vlog where I got sick that you guys may have seen and it was just a mess. I got sick towards the end of it and couldn't finish filming and then I like thought I was gonna miss a week and then I just kind of threw on a video and you know I'm still pretty new to all this so it's challenging in a fun way. Um, I really do love creating um, you know YouTube content and just kind of sharing my you know writing process with you guys and how I'm you know, evolving as an author and, you know, as a person. Uh, next year, I'll probably, or next time I attempt this, I'll probably be vlogging more every day the next time I attempt NaNoWriMo. Um, I know that's like 30 vlogs, or like even if you do like a weekend mashup vlog, um, it's a lot, but I think it'll keep me more on track if I like do another week vlog, it kind of allows me to push it off and I don't get as much content or as uh, enough good content, I don't think, so. I'm definitely going to be writing more in hand sprints, um, more just writing them down in a notebook, whether it be the giant notebook I have lying around here somewhere in this mess, or physically writing them out by hand and then putting them into the computer, I don't know. We'll play around with it next time. Um, a lot of the sprints I'm going to be doing, I'm going to utilize them more, probably. Sprints were really helpful, even small sprints, really small sprints of like 5-10 minutes here and there every day. Um, a couple of those every day got my word counts up fast and I didn't feel as pressured to get my word count. 
so those were helpful. I will probably try to be utilizing that every day. Once finals are over, I kind of want to write like five or five minutes worth here and there. Um, I think from here on, I want to keep working on empathy and work in small sprints as often as I can and to keep them in like a journal and to write a little blurb at the end of the day to see how my progress goes. You know, yes, keep a few videos for you guys, but also to you know, keep a journal for me and to like see my progress as it goes per book and then kind of have a journal about my process. It's a little more written and it kind of preps me for, you know, later if I ever get questions about the book um, and my writing processes, I'll have a better descriptor of how to answer what my process is like. Because really when you, I don't think most people think about it unless they've done it repeatedly. They have a specific process and they know it works. Um, but, you know, every book is different. Uh, every author is different. So I don't really know what my process is yet. I'm just kind of working with what I have and what I do. Um, but I think that journaling will help, especially if after finals I can do a little bit of writing every day, even if it's like five minutes. Um, and I think if I have a journal, it'll keep me more honest and focused on it. And then I think the last thing I'm going to change for next time is that I will probably either be making an NaNoWriMo workbook or I'll be buying one. It looked like people that used um, Natalia Lee's Preptober workbook were really getting better Preptober work in and I'd be curious to look at one of them or to um, purchase them for myself and use it for next NaNoWriMo or even this book later um, <clears throat> or to even make one myself. I don't know if that would help me. Um, it may be that I end up trying to make a Preptober workbook and I actually just be doing Preptober for, you know, Empathy or another book that I'm writing. Um, kind of just depends on how it goes, I guess. But yeah, that was um, how I felt about NaNoWriMo this year. I'm excited to do it again. And yeah, let me know in the comments below um, how your NaNoWriMo went, everybody. Um, if you participated in NaNoWriMo. If you didn't, you can say why or why not. And be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications about my videos and to subscribe to my channel to make sure that you get more content like this and the future content I'm going to be creating. Um, hopefully next year I'll be, or next semester, I will be creating more YouTube content for you guys because I'll have a little bit more time to dedicate towards YouTube and my writing. So, yeah. Bye.